Submarine sank to the seabed off. At Mahodi Kursk, submarine on the name of Bully Stam. Salvage of the Kursk, a challenging operation awarded by Russian authorities to the worldwide heavy lifting and transport company Mammut after months of negotiations. Mammut's salvage plan differed from earlier operations in several decisive aspects, which promise a successful result before the October stormy season on the Barents Sea. Shortly after signing, Mammut subcontracted the bulk of the project to Mammut Smith its joint venture with worldwide maritime service provider Smith International. They face an operation unique in the maritime world. The salvage plan generally looks as follows. The Kursk, 155 meters long, lies at a depth of 108 meters below sea level, 70 miles off the coast of Murmansk. Its heavily damaged nose sunk into the seabed clay. To yield a compact object that can be handled during the lifting operation, the damaged front section will be cut off by a specially designed robotic cutting wire. The salvage plan involves lifting the Kursk by means of 26 computer-controlled lifting units, all positioned on a barge. Once the barge is in place, 26 grippers, or lifting hooks, will be guided down into 26 pre-cut holes in the inner and outer hull. When correctly aligned, the gripper units will be hydraulically opened up and clamped under the frames of the inner hull, not unlike a toggle bolt. A bundle of 54 cables will be attached to each gripper. The cables are lifted by means of strand jacks that are situated on the deck of the barge. Each strand jack has a lifting capacity of 900 tons. Strand jacks lift hydraulically with a special gripping motion, not unlike climbing a rope hand over hand. They're often used for heavy lifts, but usually on land. During the lift, the force exerted on the attachment points on the Kursk needs to be constant. To maintain stability, the strand jacks will be fitted on top of a series of heave compensators that act like shock absorbers. They will allow the barge to move up and down while controlling the required tension on the strands. The lifting will be precisely controlled, centimeter by centimeter. The force on each bundle of cables can be set individually to minimize the tension on the hull of the course. The animation made it all look feasible, but the reality was something different. There were only five months to handle the total job from preparation to actual lift. Preparations began in various places around the world. Altogether, 26 lifting units have to be constructed. Each lifting unit consists of a strand jack, a heave compensating system, an enormous cable reel, grippers, and gripper guides. Besides the strand jacks, every part of the lifting unit is specially designed and constructed. Hundreds of technicians work on all parts of the lifting system. 
Computer programmers are working overtime to get the lifting operation systems ready in time. The construction of the gigantic reels for the lifting cables is a major task on its own. Kilometers of cables will have to be rolled onto these reels to prevent an enormous wire spaghetti bowl on the deck of the giant. A specially designed cutting wire will have to remove the nose of the Kursk. This cutting wire, consisting of a steel thread with specially processed buses, is first tested on an old sand dredge. Each part of the operation is tested extensively. Nothing can be left to chance. Part of the inner and outer hull of the submarine has been copied to determine whether the lifting plugs operate according to plan. A plug is lowered into the hole. It then opens and attaches itself to the frame of the submarine. A delegation of Russian engineers comes to Holland for the specific purpose of viewing this test. In the harbor of Rotterdam, the first equipment is prepared for departure to the Barents Sea. This involves two enormous suction anchors that are needed for the cutting operation. In due time, these anchors will be positioned in the seabed along the sides of the Kursk. It's mid-July, two months after signing of the salvage contract, when the pontoon with the sawing equipment leaves the Rotterdam Harbor. Meanwhile, engineers extensively calculate and recalculate all technical parts of the operation. While their complex work continues, the Giant 4 is transported to a dock in Amsterdam to be modified for the lifting operation. This 130-meter, semi-submersible barge is normally used for the transportation of heavy loads that are normally placed on deck. For this particular job, the barge must be prepared to carry cargo below deck. Enormous saddles are mounted underneath the barge. The saddles are shaped to match the outer hull of the Kursk. Below the waterline, under the bow, a huge hole is cut for the sail of the Kursk. Saddles and hole are made to tighten the submarine firmly against the giant barge, which is necessary for a safe journey from the Barents Sea to the harbor of Mermats. While work on the giant continues, the barge with the cutting equipment arrives in the small Norwegian village of Kirkenes. Here, just a few miles from the Russian border, the final tests with the cutting system will take place. First, the salvage team needs to test the cutting system on an actual piece of metal similar to the material from which the Kursk has been constructed. At least, that's how it will work in theory. Two cylinders are placed on top of the enormous suction anchors. The two cylinders, driven by gigantic power packs, have a suction pump that is able to reduce the pressure inside each cylinder, causing the anchors to work their way downwards into the seabed. After several days of testing, the team is satisfied with the results. The anchors are hung overboard before the two-day journey to the Kursk site can begin. Here, in the sheltered bay of Kirkenes, this can be done easily. Doing this on the Barents Sea with its constant swell would be very dangerous. While the pontoon sets course for the Kursk, the finishing touch is put on the giant in Amsterdam. 
As all parts need to be assembled on site, an assembly line is created on the quay immediately next to the Giant 4. First, all lifting cables are guided through the strand jacks. The next step is to guide them onto the reels. More than 200 kilometers of cables are controlled in this way. The cables are reeved and the plugs that will need to be attached to the submarine have now been assembled and are being attached. It's August now, time is pressing. The deck of the giant is getting fuller all the time. As soon as a lifting platform is completed, it is hoisted onto the giant four and installed over the holes that have been cut. In addition, the heave compensation system, consisting of four nitrogen-driven cylinders for each lifting platform, is installed. 28 containers with a total of 3,584 bottles of nitrogen are placed on deck. After two months of working nearly round the clock, the bare pontoon has been converted into a high-tech lifting bulwark, the likes of which the world has never seen. The signal for departure can be given. Even while work on the Giant is going on, an international team of divers is getting ready in Aberdeen, Scotland for departure. The diving support ship, Mayo, will function as a command ship during the operation. Without expert underwater work, the course cannot be lifted. Before departure, the divers receive final instructions about what they can expect to encounter. They've been trained in particular to be alert for the potential danger of nuclear radiation. After all, the Kursk is a nuclear submarine and will have to be handled gently. Because of the depth of more than 100 meters, the divers must remain in saturation during the entire operation. This means they'll have to work and live for a maximum of 28 days under the same pressure that prevails at a depth of 100 meters. The first 12 divers prepare themselves for this heavy task. Once the door is closed, the ordeal of the divers begins. On July 22nd, the Kursk appears on the monitors of the diving ship. Almost a year after the fatal disaster, the first divers are standing on the hull of the submarine. The gigantic task of salvaging this 9,000-ton hulk, including the bodies of the victims, can begin. According to the lifting plan, 26 holes have to be cut in the inner and outer hull of the submarine. This operation will be carried out by the divers. They need to cut the holes using abrasive jet cutting. This involves the use of high pressure water mixed with a special type of sand. The divers work round the clock so as to lose no time. <laughs> 